Hi, Marcel. Are you on the line, Marcel? I guess not. Councilman Johnson. Um, Madam Vice Chair. Yes. Um, I believe the chair needs uh, about four minutes or so. Yeah, that's what I was reaching out to find out. How, how much longer are we gonna be on standby? Thank you. Okay. Daniel? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Council Member Gray. I was just going to suggest why can't the vice chair get us started? Because the beginnings are just introductions. Um, I agree. However, it just seems like um, they're. They have. Is Daniel online? Can you hear me? I don't know if Daniel, I don't see his name listed. Um, we're down to the last two. So I'm going to let the chair run it the way he wants to run it. Okay. Okay. But thank you. WI10, are you ready? Yes, we're ready. Okay. And um, Commissioner Williams is on? Yes, she is on. Your finance on? Um. WI10, give us a couple minutes because I don't, oh no, Brett Taylor is on. I just want to make sure Brett is on. He is on. Thank you. All right, everyone. Uh, uh, good evening. I appreciate everyone uh, being patient. I ain't tough. Uh, uh, unfortunately, this due to this hybrid reality, new reality, uh, we're all not in the same room. So I have to make sure, you know, everyone is, a lot of moving parts. So uh, everyone is here. And I thank uh, Ms. Bass Knight for making sure we we're good to go. So I believe we have everything we need. Um, and with that, I would like to just again say good evening, honorable members of council, chief of staff, mayor's chief of staff, Tanya Washington, city council chief of staff, Dan Walker, department heads, and members of the public. This evening, there are two budget hearings scheduled. We have department of public works, water sewer fund, followed by a presentation from the water sewer fund regarding their six year financial plan. I would like to start by recognizing members of the Finance Committee that are in attendance by doing a roll call. Vice Chair Michelle Harley from 4th District, 
Present. Councilwoman Oliver, third district. Council member Field, eighth district. At large council president, member. Nate, Nathan Field present. All right, thank you. Council uh, member Walsh. Here. At large council member Spadola. Present. Council president Congo. And then would also like to recognize other council persons in attendance by doing a roll call. First district council member Gray. Present. Second district council member Darby. Fifth district council member Fields. Here. Sixth district council member McCoy. Here. At large council member Cabrera. Yep. At large, at large, Councilmember Dixon. Present. Brewer is here. All right. Thank you. Um, this time, I'll also like to recognize uh, in attendance as one of our panelists. We have uh, Mr. Robert Greco, Director of Office and Management and Budget, OMB. Uh, we have George Hayford from the OMB office as well. And joining with us again for the second straight night, we have. Uh, Miss uh, uh, Public Works Commissioner, Miss Kelly Williams. Uh, we have uh, her Deputy Public Works Commissioner, Vincent Carocha. Uh, we have Mr. Derek Ark Akbar from Public Works as well. And uh, uh, new to the Public Works panel is uh, Miss Christina O uh, from the um, from, from the water side of Public Works. Uh, good evening, Miss O. Um, and as well, we have other panelists. Um, and with me uh, here. At, Person is Ms. Marshall Baz Knight, um, as well as members of the public. This spring, Mayor Pazicki presented a proposed budget to Council on March 18th, which shared his vision for the intended plan use of the proposed budget. Now it is Council's fiduciary responsibility to review the budget, conduct budget hearings with various departments, and get a complete plan for the intended use of the budgetary funds. Our charter comp council must adopt a balanced budget by at least 30 days before the end, end of fiscal year. And uh, the end of fiscal year is June 30th. Council has shared its priorities with the mayor, which are inclusive of public safety, gun violence prevention, neighborhood stabilization, education, and improvement of our parks and rec centers, to name a few. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the world immensely. Nonetheless, city is fortunate in anticipating receiving approximately $55 million in American Rescue Funds, which we look forward to collaborating with the administration on a plan of action for these funds. I want to be clear here, American Rescue Plans are not factored in as part of this budget because the actual permissible use of these funds has not officially been formalized as of today's date. Before I turn it over to Mr. Hayford for a budget overview of the Water Sewer Fund, I would like to inform everyone that public comments will be asked at the end of each department's budget hearing, and we look forward to participation from the public. As always, public comment is limited to three minutes. If there are any follow-up information covered during the budget hearings that we cannot answer, Ms. Bass Knight, uh, Strategy Director of, of City Council, Ms. Bass Knight, will track and follow up on these requests, uh, either from the public or from members of the council. I ask that if my colleagues have any questions, Please use the raise hand feature. And now, Mr. Hayford, I turn it over to you for a financial overview of the Water Sewer Funds proposed fiscal year 22 budget, followed by a brief opening statement from uh, Public Works Commissioner uh, Kelly Williams, and then a question and answer from Council. The floor is yours, Mr. Hayford. We started. Chris? Uh, yes. Uh, okay, uh, Miss Mr. Hayford. I'm not able to hear anybody. Yeah, so so he's on mute. So somebody needs to message him. Um, Can you put on the slide for me? The slide. Okay. 
Yeah, you are on mute for a little bit, Mr. Hafer. So but they they put it on mute. I was trying to get it off. Okay. Oh. Okay. Can we have the so slide? Slides ready. Um, since WIT has it ready, we are we are ready to uh, roll with you. The floor will be yours. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Chairman Johnson and, and members of City City, City oh, Council. I would like to present <laughs> the Department of Public Works proposed operating budget for FY 2022 on behalf of Office of Management and Budget. The Department Water Saw Fund budget request is just over $72.5 million. I can't hear y'all. This represents an increase of $1.75 million, or 2.5% over the FY 2021 budget. Here are the various okay. account groups okay. that contributed to the Water Saw Fund increase. Next slide. Personal services increased by about $167,000. 14 positions, including 10 that are split funded, were upgraded through the appeal process in FY 2021. That added $14,400 to salaries and benefits. Regular salaries rose by $102,000 or 2% due to a citywide 2% cola step increases for non-union classified employees and annual reviews for executive and managerial employees. MSNE in the water source fund increased a total of $1.4 million for FY 2022. The total increase consists of the following. Repairs to equipment was increased by $234,500 reflecting a more aggressive electrical and mechanical preventative maintenance. The increase also covers solar invented installations at a portafilda plant and tenor building. Repairs to buildings structures increased by $250,000 due to a higher cost of maintaining structures, parking lots, sidewalks, and driveways. Repairs to water lines rose by $200,000, reflecting the expanded maintenance program. Engineering costs increased by $105,000 to support in engineering studies related to operations and maintenance. Legal fees increased by $100,000 to cover arbitration and legal proceedings against Newcastle County, the Army Corps of Engineers, and Honeywell. Contracted maintenance services, which includes the contract with Jacobs to operate and maintain the city's wastewater treatment plant, water tank painting, and hydrant testing and maintenance, increased by $353,000. Next slide. Indirect cost charges decreased by $183,000, reflecting the recent revisions to the cost allocation model provided by Black & Veatch. Depreciation increased by $342,000, reflecting the aggressive infrastructure replacement program adopted by the department that has increased both the normal and value of the city's water, soil and stormwater infrastructure fixed assets. Finally, debt service <laughs> decreased by a net $222,000. The recent refunding of two older bond issues, along with the issuance of a new money for the FY 2018 capital budget at a record low interest rate, combined to lower interest payments by $161,000. That concludes my overview of the Public Works Water Source Fund proposed budget. I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. All right. Um, just time, are there any questions for OMB from our members of council? All right, I'm um, seeing none. And also I would like to recognize a uh, council member, Shanae Darby is present. Um, and at this time, I believe, uh, th thank you very much, Mr. Hayford for the, uh, for the overview at this time, I will uh, pass it off to Public Works Commissioner Kelly Williams and 
you have a brief opening statement or remember your team about the water sewer fund. Great. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, committee chair uh, Johnson, members of council, members of public. Thank you for having us this evening to discuss the, the water sewer stormwater fund portion of the Department of Public Works. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, my directors that are here to uh, help, help me discuss the fund um, and some of the directors who may be on the, uh, on the call today, including uh, the Director of Water, uh, Chris O, um, Assistant Division Director Brian Lennon in charge of uh, our sewer operations, and City Engineer Joanne Liao. Um, second, I'd also like to thank the members of the water, uh, the water utility, particularly those men and women who have worked nonstop 24-7, 365 to keep our system operating during the pandemic to provide completely uninterrupted services to our customers. They work very hard to make sure that we all have clean drinking water and uh, wastewater during the pandemic. Um, there were some very close calls and trying times, um, but we managed to get through it uh, without, without any interruption. Um, and, and it was very impressive. So uh, I would sincerely like to thank everybody in the water utility um, for what they've given up um, you know, what I'd like to thank their families for, for working overtime, for taking on those extra shifts. Um, it really means a lot to us and to our customers. With that being said, um, we'll just go to the slides if you can. Um, the Department of Pup, uh, no, there you go. Uh, Department of Public Works. So our mission of the Department of Public Works is to operate, maintain critical infrastructure and facilities to provide superior service for our customers and to promote re resiliency. Uh, in addition to providing services that are vital to our constituents, such as waste collection, street cleaning, snow, snow removal, street paving, sidewalk replacement, traffic controls, constituent call center, and much more, the department also operates an entire water, wastewater, and stormwater utility through this enterprise fund that we'll be discussing this evening. Just so you're aware of the, the vastness of our utility, um, we have approximately 108,000 customers, both inside the city and outside of the city. We have two water treatment plants that produce an average of 16 million gallons per day of drinking water. We maintain 420,000, oh, sorry, 420 miles of water transmission and dis distribution mains. We maintain 370 miles of sewer and stormwater mains. We own and operate a regional wastewater treatment plant that services every resident and business north of the CND Canal. That makes up approximately 600,000 customers. We also uh, run a stormwater management program that captures more than 80% of the stormwater runoff within the city. Next slide. Our vision is to continue to provide ser uh, superior service with respect, integrity, and with the responsiveness that every customer deserves. Our priorities for the 2021 Water Sewer Fund are focused on continuing to maintain and improve the city's infrastructure and to provide customers with safe drinking water, wastewater treatment, and stormwater mitigation. We'd like to continue our 100% compliance with all regulatory requirements for drinking water and wastewater treatment. We'd like to implement stormwater mitigation projects, focusing on areas with recurring flooding issues. And we'd like to proactively identify and replace the potential, uh, potential lead service lines. Next, next uh, slide. 
the performance measures we use in the water sewer fund really um, relate to the, uh, the regulatory requirements we have. We measure the number of non-compliant events that must be reported to a state or federal agency, such as a CSO overflow, an NPDES violation, boil water advisory, and any Safe Drinking Water Act violations. We measure the length of time a customer is well without water, measured in hours, and we measure the number of water quality complaints. Next slide. We're ready to uh, answer the city council questions, and I'm gonna turn it over to Deputy Commissioner Vince Crocia. All right. Um, all right, let's dive right into the first question as we've asked every department. Um, can you uh, review the uh, impact of, of COVID-19 on, on budgetary account line for the water, water sewer fund? I understand you covered it the other night about uh, public works general fund. Uh, what, what has the impact been on water sewer fund? Okay, so um, under the water sewer fund, as you see on the slide on your screen, COVID-related employee leave, uh, 120000 and overtime expenses of uh, $8,500 uh, was the impact. Um, also asked if uh, these lines could continue to be impacted in fiscal 22, so long that folks are uh, on related leave. Um, the overtime situation is, is calmed down a bit. We were able to get a couple of vacant positions filled and don't have anybody currently out on any type of COVID leave. So that's, that's not being impacted uh, at this time. Um, now, going forward, is there anticipation that, do you know, given that it's calmed down some, should um, the impact on the account line still be there at all, or, or do you expect it to lessen? The only the only wild card for us, uh, <laughs> um, Mr. Uh, Chair, is the uh, related employee leave for folks that are on COVID leave related to uh, children, you know, child care, and that type of thing. That's uh, the overtime has not been a real problem for us in the utility. It's, it's just the, the folks that are that are on leaves. So um, that that's being impacted by the CARES line. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, now moving to question number two. Um, with with the anticipation of the American Rescue Funds, um, can you discuss any tentative plan uh, for using these funds? And again. I understand that the guidelines are um, being crystallized. I think we have more information than we even had two weeks ago, but um, where we stand right now, um, is there anticipation that some of it can be used for water sewer fund? Yeah, we, there, is, there is that potential. Again, once we receive the guidelines, uh, you know, we are uh, in conversations with the, uh, the mayor's office uh, re related to this. Uh, it is anticipated funds will be used to cover cover revenue shortfalls within the utility, uh, potentially pay for some infrastructure improvements and neighborhood stabilization efforts. Um, once we receive uh, federal government uh, guidelines, as I said, and in consultation with the administration, Heroes funding or something similar may be considered for frontline workers. We just we just don't have uh, have that those guidelines yet to to be able to make those decisions. But uh, all these things will be taken into consideration. Okay. Um, so, and, and this wasn't actually a, a, a question that I had proposed before, but um, I, I just saw this afternoon, even there was a infrastructure package that passed the U.S. Senate. Um, I believe our own Senator Tom Carper was the uh, lead sponsor. You know, that infrastructure bill will have an impact on, um, you know, locally, uh, clean water. Uh, yeah, actually, um, the commissioner and myself were at at the uh, press press conference for that this morning. Uh, so that those funds are are being allocated through a number of ways uh, for uh, water, wastewater, stormwater infrastructure uh, through our capital program. As we discussed far, you know, farther down in these questions, you'll see where there are a lot of funds that are budgeted in the capital program for improvements to our regional wastewater treatment plant. So. There is the thought that uh, provided that legislation uh, passes the House in its current form and is uh, signed by the president, that uh, there would be the opportunity to get not only 
uh, SRF funds, which we've used in the past, which are low interest loans, but also that some of this funding would come to us in the form of grants, which is, is greatly needed uh, based on, um, you know, on the amount of work we have to do and the rate pressure that that uh, puts on our, our water sewer rates. So um, I guess to answer your question, yes, we, we are hopeful that if that uh, is, is passed, that we will be able to, uh, to utilize that uh, funding for infrastructure improvements within the uh, water and wastewater utility. All right, so, uh, and thank you very much for that coverage. Again, I, I saw the news item, I, I just, um, and I actually did not know there was a whole press conference. So I, 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 uh, I definitely look forward to looking at the footage and, and reviewing that. Uh, I imagine it was a great event. Um, Council member Walsh. floor is yours, ma'am. When you spoke earlier about, um, where is it, family leave, did you mean a formal family leave or the city telling you to work from home? That was, it was folks that were off, not working due to childcare where the kids were at home and they needed to be home to take care of, of minor children. And how many in your department are doing that about? I don't know. That would be an HR question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and moving on to question three, he discussed the current vacant positions and the timeline for filling. Hi, please. Free now you'll see a, a list of the water sewer uh, fund positions that are currently vacant, uh, vacant and the date they became vacant and uh, where, what division within uh, the utility they're in. We are working closely with our HR uh, department uh, to fill vacancies as quickly as possible that are approved by the chief of staff. Uh, the third part of the question asked about a freeze on vacant positions and there is a freeze on all vacant positions until the chief of staff approves filling them. So. Uh, as we can make the case for ones that we need to be filled, we're we're getting uh, chief of staff approval and moving to fill them as, as quickly as possible. Um, questions. All right, thank you. I guess uh, now we're ready to move on to question number four. Uh, dealing with a similar item, can you dis discuss any proposed changes to new positions? Um, Upgrades, downgrades, new positions, title changes. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, uh, we have one position uh, that was a title change only. That was the new title being the water quality laboratory uh, coordinator. That's our water quality lab. Uh, the other five on the list were all as a result of the biannual appeals process. Uh, four of them in the uh, utility, one uh, constituent services supervisor that is split funded. So, so, so. Sorry, sorry about that actually. Um, uh, Mr. Croach, I just wanted to go back actually, I was looking just even notice that I um, understand the vacant positions. Um, one of the positions, actually two of the positions have been vacant since 2019. Um, the reason is specifically those positions, I believe is construction inspector and maintenance mechanic. Is there a reason they've been vacant for so long? And we would just, we need approval from the chief of staff to fill them. Uh, at one point during COVID in the 20 budget, we were looking to potentially cut those positions. Uh, budget was approved with them still in there. They were still not filled because of the potential. Uh, we were not sure what the impacts of COVID were gonna be on future budgets. We had no idea at, the, at that point in time that we would be receiving any additional funding and uh, to make revenue shortfalls whole. So uh, a decision, decision was made to hold off on filling those positions. All right, All right thank you. All right, now uh, we can move, move forward to question number five. Um, 
he discussed the planning use of approximately $500,000 for overtime. Uh, so overtime within the utility is broken down amongst the four divisions on your screen. Sewer maintenance is 75K, uh, water system at 420K, wastewater, wastewater treatment for 500 and stormwater for 4,000. The bulk of that is the water system and that is essentially uh, our plant operators, which their schedule has uh, overtime built into it based on the, on the shift schedule that they work. We also have construction inspectors that are subject to call-ins for markouts in the middle of the night, as well as our water, uh, our water services group who answers uh, calls for main breaks and in inclement weather nights, um, you know, and, and uh, winter weather and so forth. And there, uh, there's also some coverage for snow events where we have to bring additional folks on that, that breaks down the overtime for the utility. Um, I thank you very much for covering that item. And, uh, now I'm ready to move on to Mr. Questions. Chair. Oh, sorry, sorry, I missed you. We got a lot. This very hybrid system is not easy, so I appreciate everyone's indulgence. It, when you're running, it's different if we're all in person or all virtual. It's very difficult doing hybrid. Um, but uh, yes. Council member Walsh, the floor is yours. Can we go back to question five? Yes, sure. Um, could you tell me approximately how much, or if we have any of the old main breaks or the old mains still left throughout our city? Yes, yes, uh, council member uh, Walsh. So um, Kelly uh, had, had kind of talked about that a little bit when she kicked off uh, her. Um, uh, presentation for the department. So we have 420 miles of water main throughout our water district. That's the city and inside city and outside city. Right. Out of that 420 miles, approximately 46% of that is over 75 years old. This is why we've ramped up capital spending for uh, small main and transmission improvements over the, uh, the last uh, four capital improvement programs. Uh, you know, so typically the age of, uh, of, of cast iron, again, it depends what vintage. The older cast iron was thicker. It would last approximately 100 to 145 years. The newer cast iron, we're lucky if we, if we can get 100 years out of it. Uh, we're replacing everything now with ductile iron. So to, I guess to answer your question, we still have Maine in service within the city that is from the 1860s and 1870s. Uh, that big project that you just saw run up 11th Street that... Uh, I did uh, from beginning of September of last year and working through the winter up until uh, you know, through April, uh, we replaced three of the largest, oldest and largest diameter mains in our water system uh, that went from Cool Spring uh, Reservoir uh, down to our, um, our Brandywine plant down at 16th uh, and French. So uh, yeah, we, we still have old, old uh, main in the system. We're aggressively going after it. We're, we're going after undersized Maine with impacted fire flows. That's, uh, that's why we continually put these contracts out on the street for small Maine improvements. Our, our goal is to be able to do one and a half percent of Maine replacement every year to try to stay ahead of this. Mr. Chair. Yes, please. Follow up. Um, what you're replacing it with, what is the life expectancy the of that? What you're replacing the old years. Maine. Yeah, it's, it's duct. So what we're replacing everything with is typically going to be uh, duct cementaceous line, ductile iron pipe. We would anticipate the life of that to be uh, approximately 100 years. And when a main breaks outside of the city limits in areas where we, we give the water, we pay for that? Yes, we do. That's our main. It's our system. So our water service group or our contractor handles those uh, calls for repair. Okay, I understand it's our water and I understand it's our system, but we're providing their water. So I wondered if they were sending something in to help us replace those veins. So, all right, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. All right, and uh, I believe we can fast forward a little bit. We're on question number six. Um, 
Can you discuss the planning use of the $4.2 million budgeted in professional fees? This is a approximately $273,000 increase over last year's fiscal budget. And can you also uh, specify the vendors and let the contract and if um, any of them are DBEs? Okay. So if you go to the next page, this, this is split across the next, uh, next three slides. So this is the, uh, consultant piece of this, the ones that you see on your, uh, on the screen that are, uh, I, that are, that are bold italic and, and as DBE firms listed on it, uh, have called out some specific DBE firms that we're utilizing, uh, within, uh, the consulting group, uh, years of service and, uh, scope of services, uh, are on your screen. Give you a second to take a look at that. Okay, next slide, please. And this is the uh, next part of that. There's multiple engineering firms that we're using that are uh, DBE firms. They were called out there as well, uh, as well as professional uh, fees for legal and uh, temp agencies. Next slide, please. Um, so, sorry, uh, Deputy Commissioner, I, I'm just, um, just to avoid any confusion, I, I don't see any demarcation for DBEs. Um, one slide, please. Separate slide. Yeah, so you see, if you look at the name, you see the ones that are highlighted in bold, and Alex, there's, there's three of them near the bottom and another one up near the top, and then they have DBE firm and the scope services behind it. Okay. Okay, there we go. Good. All right, thank you. Uh, the next part uh, asked about um, temp uh, limited service employees temps. Uh, here are the various titles of folks that we've been using, uh, rate and length of service. Uh, there was also a sub part of the question that asked uh, about um, trainings, you know, cross training of, of folks. So, I mean, um, Again, this is, uh, you know, this is, you know, exactly what happens within the department. So we uh, bring in, we, uh, public works managers, our engineers, uh, directors, we bring in the necessary assistance we need for projects at hand. Uh, there are a lot of times uh, with what we do that specialized expertise is required where we don't have someone on staff that can design or engineer a specific project. Uh, the reason we use outside engineers because of design liability that is then assumed by the engineer record and not the department. Uh, and the large, with a large number of projects that we have going on, uh, we do not have enough project managers on staff. So our staff has to bring in outside engineers and consultants and then manage them in order to get the tasks and, and the projects that we have to do successfully completed. Okay, um, now, I just kind of want to go back a little bit to just, just go through. <clears throat> um, I, I noticed that um, obviously one of the, one of the biggest uh, con uh, vendors is, is Black & Beach. Uh, I know they have many different contracts with the city, uh, some. So, um, and they've, they've been, a, a, I guess, a vendor for 15 years. So. Right now, Black and Beach, is, is there, I guess the question is, is there um, any thoughts about actually um, Black and Beach having more of a social impact investment into the city? Because um, they've been a contractor for a long time. Okay, I mean, I, we use them, for, we use them for, for consulting services as it relates to rates uh, the, uh, the stormwater utility and so forth. I mean, we just, we don't have that expertise on staff with someone that, commit, can, that can commit the amount of time that we need them for and the, and the task that we assign to them to do. So, I mean, those are, we've been using them since, as long as I've been here with Public Works and, you know, they know our system inside and out. So, you know, we, we bring in the necessary talent that we need to to get the job done. I know we've had this conversation before when it comes to some of the other uh, water sewer front contractors about um, getting a little bit more investment in terms of Wilmington. Um, 
because I understand that they're they're a vendor, but um, there's uh, in terms of social impact and, and actually uh, community benefit, I, I don't know if it's present. And again, it's maybe something for Public Works um, Committee or, or Finance Committee, but I think it the conversation needs to be had about how because um, I see they are a diverse board, they have a diverse leadership team. I'm certainly sure they get it, but uh, more it's about the conversation about how we can get them to you know buy into Wilmington a little bit more. Uh, and and I, I, for one, have talked about it, and, and I know many of my colleagues have. Um, it's something I think it's our responsibility to try to make sure. So I just want to make sure, um, and I don't know if Commissioner Williams has an answer. Have you had that conversation with Black and Beach about community investment programs? I can speak to that. I don't think it's my role as the commissioner of public works to have that conversation. Um, I think that would be more for the mayor's office and for council. Um, my job as the head of a utility is to get the best and the brightest to do our work and the social impacts that that's policy. So I, you know, a utility doesn't, you know, necessarily make policy. So I would I would leave that to the mayor's office, um, and 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 for the mayor, you know for council and the mayor's office to have that discussion with Black and Beach. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And and that's probably a conversation um, that needs to be had offline. Quite frankly, I don't want us to appear as if we're coercing. While community impact is very important. I don't want to feel like that we're um, coercing someone into doing something or they won't get the contract. So I think that's probably something that's a little sensitive we need to talk offline. I understand, and, and, they're, and they're all one year contracts. So I know they're going to come up for review. I, and it's just, again, it's a conversation mm -hmm. that we know hasn't been had. We don't talk, you know, have, we don't need to talk about the nitty gritty right now. But uh, I think when we're looking at the budget, you know, certainly their service, I know that what the services they provide is just, you know, maybe uh, there's a little bit of a more dynamic impact they can have on our city, that's all, so. Understood. Um, all right, and don't believe there's any additional follow-ups. Um, all right, so this time we can move to question number seven. He discussed approximately $21.5 million budget in a contracted maintenance line um, for the wastewater treatment plant. And this is a $354,000 increase over the prior year's budget. Okay. So you go to the next slide, please. Right, so the uh, contracted maintenance services line at uh, 22, is $22.55 uh, million. This is wastewater treatment plant operations and maintenance agreement for 20 years with operations management international OMI. Uh, they have engaged in uh, multiple uh, community uh, investments that are outlined here. Uh, you can take a look at that. If there's any questions, I'll try to answer that. Uh, but they've, they've done multiple collections for toy drives, partnerships with uh, local businesses, um, donation of electronic equipment. Participated or uh, they will be participating in a cleanup day on May 15th. Uh, Delta Tech outreach and uh, advertising for STEM-related majors at. Uh, uh, HBCU and two residents of the city. Can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, the next part asks, asks about their demographic breakdown. Uh, so in, I can just comment because I spoke with them about this. And in terms of uh, minority disadvantaged business enterprises uh, in contract year one, they have committed over 10% of their controllable outside services to local uh, M or DBEs and currently have a large project. It's a site uh, fiber optic network over uh, half a million being uh, completed by uh, an MDBE. Uh, Jacobs OMI is a worldwide company and Public Works does not have access to the racial breakdown of their employees. So that this is just something that I was not able to put my hands on. Okay, and I and I appreciate that comprehensive coverage and. And I, and I do note the community um, community agreement with, with Jacobs about the investment. And that's actually what we'd like to see more of. <laughs> you know, I, I think we just talked about a few minutes ago. And I know with the wrangling over that contract, that was part of, um, you know, I think conversations that were had. So, so thank you for, for noting that, the community investment. All right. Um, 
So at this time, I believe we can move on to question number eight. This is specifically dealing with the uh, 9.5 million in the contract maintenance group. And this is a 774,000 uh, million increase over the last year's budget. 774,000 <laughs> increase over the last year's budget. I wish it was 774 million, but wish we don't have that. So, so do I. <laughs> there we go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, the the light the line items that make up this contract group are on your slide uh, here. So it's it's made up of multiple objects in in the budget, and uh, I can uh, go into a little bit of detail. You also have some subparts to that question. Uh, Wi Tan, if you can go to the next slide, please. The sub uh, parts A through uh, D are here as well. And if you go to the next slide, I'll try to give you a breakdown of what. Uh, what this is made up of. Okay, so the various vendors that are made uh, that make this up in the dollar amounts are are here. Uh, most of these larger uh, amounts that you'll see in the column amount column are all four bid contracts that are advertised and awarded to the lowest uh, uh, lowest uh, responsible uh, bidder. Um, several you'd asked about DB uh, participation before and. Uh, in this particular uh, group here, uh, like Brandywine Construction, for instance, is in here twice, one for a sewer contract that was approved by council and once for a water distribution emergency, you know, water distribution contract was approved by council. Both of those contracts to date have DBE subcontractor uh, involvement in the sewer contract. It was 9% fiscal year to date and 15% fiscal year to date on the water distribution contract. So that may not necessarily be reflected in the prime contractor, but uh, we are tracking this stuff and they, we have them account for that in their uh, accounting system. And that is true with a lot of the other vendors that we use for various things as well. Uh, a lot of the big contracts, say for street paving, concrete improvements and so on and so forth, there are DB subcontractors embedded into all these contracts. And some of the uh, utilization per month can be as high as 30%. So I, I thought it would be just important to point that out. Um, any, again, any, any other questions of any of the vendors on there, I'd be glad to entertain them. Uh, one question did ask about what was split with Newcastle County. So if you'll see at the bottom, asset management and the Newcastle County direct expenses are uh, for the Amoresco and the electricity in the building are split with Newcastle County based on occupancy 7030. Go to the next slide, please. Uh, large meter test and replacements. We anticipate testing all the large meters uh, this year. Uh, that's 1,214, and we anticipate 150 large meter replacements. Uh, the, uh, also asks about main breaks. So the water main breaks and valve replacement work are emergency of nature. So therefore, these are not scheduled. The contract that we have with Brandywine is used for emergency response to main breaks and leaks. So whether it be a water main leak, a valve leak, uh, these these are those one of the mechanisms that we have to go after this type of emergency work and uh, and, and get it performed. Um, um, now we can move on to question number nine. Uh, can you discuss the plan use of approximately eight hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars budgeted in petroleum and chemicals account line at the water treatment plant at the both Porter, Porter and Brandywine filter plants. If you can go to the next slide, please. All right, so this is what makes up uh, the, that, that character line. There's motor vehicle fuels and lubricants, 5K. Bulk chemicals is the bulk of it at 775,000 and laboratory supplies at 57 and a half uh, K. Uh, utilization is uh, for the items listed below each. You can go to the next slide, please. Can you change the slide, please, Derek? Thank you. All right, so the chemical usage at our plants, um, we budget uh, based uh, on uh, average production to 20 MGD. Uh, the chemical usage is continually being optimized and is reviewed based on our production demand. If we have main breaks or leaks, they can resu resu result in higher production than is normal. Um, if we have to use water from hoops, which is our backup water supply, it requires higher levels of ferric chloride. As a coagulant, heavy rain events, pollution discharge, drought can require us to make the switch to hoops, uh, you know, within a day's notice. Um, it also requires additional dosing of lime to balance pH and water treatment. 
the bulk chemical usage is not linear. In other words, that uh, water production is higher during spring and summer periods, so it requires a greater chemical usage during those warm months. Other source water issues upstream on the Brandywine, which is the main source of the raw water for our facilities uh, and, and from wastewater treatment plants that are upstream can cause uh, use of sodium hypochlorite uh, to, to double. So uh, again, uh, chemical usage is, you know, is, can, can vary from year to year, but do our best to budget for it based on our demand and we try to optimize it to the extent possible. Thank you. And um, I believe we're ready to move on to question 10. Uh, and can you discuss the approximately $807,000 budgeted for miscellaneous materials and supplies? Can you specify? Uh, the next slide, please. All right, so this is broken out on the next two slides because there are uh, quite a number of them for the most part. Uh, these are um, blanket POs with, with local vendors for either our water uh, maintenance division uh, or our water uh, services division or the water quality lab. Uh, there are a couple larger amounts that are called out there specifically, which are four bid contracts for grass cutting and maintenance. You go to the next slide, please. And uh, some of the other ones on here are like miscellaneous plumbing supplies and parts, fire hydrants. These contracts all get advertised for bid, uh, and then they are awarded to the, uh, to the uh, lowest responsible bidder. Uh, there are several other contracts on here for emergency tree work that uh, some of these that are sixty thousand or less are handled uh, handled by three three bids and then awarded to the lowest uh, the lowest proposer. Um, at this time, we're ready to move to question 11. If there's no questions from council. Um, he discussed the planning use of approximately $383,000 budgeted for the laboratory fees in the year grouping. The lab fees uh, is one of the items that, uh, that makes up the, uh, these two um, object groups. Uh, lab fees are broken down by amount and use uh, on your screen, various testing. These are all lab tests that are required. Uh, as part of our reporting to the state office of drinking water uh, that and it's performed by our water by our state certified water quality lab. Um, so a lot of this is uh, some outside laboratory testing that we do uh, that we have for work that can't be done in our lab. And a lot of it is also supplies that are for uh, you know, our equipment at our lab as well. You can go to the next slide, please. Meter reading cost is with our meter reading vendor, uh, ITRON. It was a five-year contract approved by council, and this covers the cost of our mm -hmm. monthly water meter reads, mobile readers, reports, investigations, the cost of reading equipment, tablets, mobile radios, and so forth to uh, bring back uh, data on our meters uh, into our field deployment management tool, as well as uh, to bring reads back uh, so utility billing can process uh, the bills. And, and um, in this reader, um, you know, reading costs, that has changed recently, right? Because of the uh, the new systems that are installed. So has this, has this price increased a lot or just the way we do it? Uh, the way we do it's changed. We're actually getting higher percentages. So as part, we've been undergoing a, um, a small meter replacement program here for about the last, I guess, six years now. That's, we're probably about 93% of the way uh, completed with that. So what that is resulting is, is a greater, uh, a higher accuracy, a higher level of, of actual reads. So how I like to, you know, like to look at this, it's, you know, actuals versus estimates. We want to be sending out actual bills, not estimating bills. So typically when the mobile reader goes around, we're, we're getting 99% plus of the actual reads captured and that data is then brought back and electronically transmitted uh, into our billing system to create the bills. Okay. So the, the, the budget amount has remained uh, fairly constant over over the last five plus years. All right, very good. Um, we're ready to move on to question 12. If, uh, can you discuss the $987,000 budgeted between equipment and construction and repairs account grouping? This is a $94,000 increase over last year's budget. 
And so that um, the, this is broken down from the various groups. The equipment group uh, is uh, furniture, pictures, office equipment for 8K, other non-CAP equipment for 100K, and computer software, uh, non-capital, which is uh, essentially licensed. Uh, I'm sorry, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, this, this is the items that break down that um, list. If you can go to the next slide, please. These are essentially software licensing agreements for CityWorks, uh, ESRI, CSOFT. If you can go to the next slide, slide, please. The next object group in there, construction or repairs group, that's, uh, sorry, uh, that's made up of building supplies, material supplies for roads, which is concrete, blacktop, coal patch, mineral aggregates, uh, manhole covers and basins, and also of our water meter shop supplies, which is for water meters and fire meters and, and ERTs. Uh, that rounds out uh, all of the usage for that line. Okay, excellent. Um, moving on to question 13. Can you discuss the Honeywell guarantee lower costs um, that were pertaining to electricity, um, considering that we have the uh, citywide water sewer fund? Um, and this actual account line is 856000 This is a $50,000 increase over last year's budget. And I guess more or less because we were promised a lower cost, and I just want to touch on, if we didn't reach that goal, why didn't we reach that goal? Okay, so what this do, uh, has done, so this PEPC portfolio one, what we've done, we've gone out and procured electricity in a different way. So the agreement that we're currently under now was a three-year, I believe, with two one-year extensions possible. We're in the uh, final extension year uh, of that now. We've got, each time we've gone out on a procurement, our energy cost for our fixed rate uh, items has gotten lower and lower each time. First time we reduced the cost about 13%. This last time we reduced our, our cost per kilowatt hour for supply about 10%. Uh, the bigger piece of this within the utility is, is raw water pumping. That is the single largest electricity cost for, for a utility is to pump raw water. So what we uh, have done there, we've, we've uh, purchased power on, on block and index and then taken advantage of off peak hours of pumping. So instead of pumping throughout the day during the daytime on a hot summer day, when the electricity cost uh, per kilowatt hour is at the highest point, we pump for 12 hours to pump twice as much in the middle of the night when the electricity cost is at its lowest cost for the day. So this whole day ahead pumping, we have been utilizing that since the inception of this contract. Um, just to kind of go over the last number of years, I went back and took a look at this for this question. Uh, prior to this, uh, prior to entering into the GPC contract, we were at 1.38 million in 2019 for electricity costs. And right back then we were paying about eight and a half cents a kilowatt hour for electricity. Our costs have ranged in 16 to a low of about 651K to last, last full year of 851K. Again, I spoke uh, extensively about the day ahead pumping, reducing our overall costs. But operational concerns and equipment maintenance can affect the timing and the volume of pumping activity. So if we have pumping stations that are out of service for maintenance or we have a problem with something, just to make sure that we don't run out of raw water, we may have to pump outside of peak. So it can affect the savings in each particular year. But to the over the long run, our you know, on the on the block and index pricing, our average cost for electricity is three percent, is three cents per kilowatt hour, and sometimes actually. Uh, in some months lower than that. So I guess to answer the question, was, was, the, was the contract, uh, the GPC guaranteed energy performance contract successful? I say yes, because we lowered our overall rate from about eight and a half cents down to less than three cents. So we have seen significant savings since engaging in that project. Okay, and as a follow-up, uh, Deputy Commissioner, is it, uh, is, since I understand that the uh, it's very expensive to pump, I guess to make it very uh, plain um, to, to produce. Right. So it's um, it's going from the Brandywine River, right, which is the low point. Like think of that, and it's go it's being pumped all the way up Porter. to Porter, which is on the top of the hill on two hundred two. So it's incredibly expensive to pump all of that you know, 16 million gallons a day. Just think of that, right? So you're low, low, you know, low river, at sea you know, level. you know. We're at over, sea level and we're going yeah. up to 246 feet above sea level. 
there's a cost in electricity. Is about the impact of renewable energy. Is that possibly something in the near future that we can lower these costs even more um, by looking at renewable energy for assisting with this process? So we, we already uh, have actually uh, up at the Porter, uh, the Porter treatment plant, we've already got a solar field up there. We're actually right in the process as we speak of retrofitting that field to go to uh, 1,000 watt panels with new string inverters. So that uh, field uh, will be, will be uh, able to produce about uh, 728 uh, kilowatt, uh, kilowatts of uh, electrical power for use at the facility. Um, as far as renewable energy at Brandywine, we, we just simply don't have, uh, you don't have uh, physical space down there. If we were to want to try to add um, panels down there, there's just, there's just really not the land to do it. Uh, we did look at all this during the, the GEP contract that we engaged in back around 2009. We looked at all of our potential sites and the uh, Porter uh, complex up on 202 and our municipal complex uh, down off of Terminal Avenue were the two locations that uh, were found to be most suited to, to do solar installation. So there is uh, solar installed at both of those sites and we have been seeing a, a reduction in energy costs because of that. Okay, excellent. Um, all right, I believe we're, there's no questions on that. We're ready to move to question 14. You discussed the planned use of $200,000 budget for community activities. Please. That's broken down about three, uh, three, uh, three budget line groups. Uh, the homeowner uh, connection subsidy, a 45K, uh, water protect, protection subsidy at 60K, and cemetery easements at 95K. Is that is that consistent with prior years? Um, those three areas being the main community activity areas. That is correct. So water protection subsidy was the same. Uh, homeowner connection subsidy, I believe, at one point was actually fifty five thousand a year. We've we've lowered that down. It's based on actuals. So that uh, that program is essentially codified under the infrastructure renewable plan in section forty five one thirty three of the code. Uh, so as we get folks that apply for that, uh, that they've re replaced their service line, uh, we'll, we'll re reimburse them. Uh, a actual costs are up to $1,000, whichever is less. Um, and then uh, the uh, cemetery easements is uh, based on ordinance uh, passed by council where uh, we pay the uh, cemetery's stormwater bills uh, uh, in, in, in lieu for an easement to, to put stormwater uh, BMPs on properties uh, of the cemetery. Thank you. And um, I guess we can go to the biggie. Uh, can you summarize the fiscal year 22 proposed capital projects and uh, make things stand out? Okay. Uh, this is on the, this is broken down by, by division as again, there are four uh, divisions within the water sewer fund. So within sewer maintenance, uh, these are right off the summary sheet from the forms that were submitted. Uh, these are the amounts and the, and the titles of the projects. Water system, uh, you know, being you know one of the bigger parts of that. There's a lot of moving parts there. Um, you know, annual transmission, uh, annual water improvements, transmission improvements, pressure zone reliability. There are plant improvements that are that are happening up there right now for both Porter and Brandywine. Pumping station improvements. We're, we're doing you know a station. We're redoing the station's pumps up at Kennett right now. Raw water architectural improvements, ongoing, that's ongoing maintenance to the historic buildings. You can go to the next slide, please. And then our wastewater treatment, which is a biggie, uh, as uh, I've, I've talked about it in some committee meetings before and in front of council, uh, we're, we're going to be spending approximately $7 million a year in capital improvements at the wastewater treatment plant every year for uh, the next 10 years. There's, uh, you know, we've got a plant now that's 68 years old that is going to require uh, work. Some of these uh, assets that were put in in the 50s is it's it's now time to now time to replace them. So those costs are budgeted out uh, within our six year program. And then we've got uh, stormwater for drainage, green infrastructure, and urban forest management. Okay. Um, thank you. And I think. Uh, that was actually the uh, last slide, so uh, we could just uh, turn to the organizational chart and, and highlight any 
points on it. Okay, so this uh, first page is the org chart for the entire department. Uh, should this during the general fund, this just gives a breakdown. Uh, everything under the commissioner and myself, uh, the various directors and the positions they're responsible for. If you go to the next slide, please. This gives the breakdown in particular of the water sewer um, division, water division. So uh, everything that comes under uh, Chris O as the uh, water division director, and she's got uh, two uh, assistant water division directors. One, as we discussed earlier in the presentation, that is uh, vacant and has been vacant for, for some time. Um, temp, uh, Employees are indicated there in red, vacant positions indicated in green for ease of uh, reading. All right. Um, thank you very much. And now, this time, I'd like to turn it to members of the public if there's any questions from them. All right. Um, seeing none, then I'd like to turn it back to council if there's any final questions or, or comments. All right. Well, seeing that, I appreciate uh, you, Commissioner Williams, and uh, Deputy Commissioner Karocha, and, um, and the whole Public Works team for, again, uh, being very comprehensive and asking all our questions. I know it's a lot of material, but uh, these are very important uh, contracts, very important um, uh, services um, to, to our city. So we appreciate the work um, that you and your team put in, and uh, I look forward to... Uh, to seeing, I guess, the impact of the infrastructure plan if it passes the house, and hopefully that can help our city some as well. Um, so um, with that, this concludes the Water Sewer Fund budget hearing. And um, coming up later this evening, we have the um, last and final um, budget hearing of the year. We have the, uh, the fiscal year projections for the Water Sewer Fund. Um, we have a particular we have a um, presentation by uh, finance and public works on that. Uh, so with that, uh, we will uh, adjourn until 6.45 p.m. and we will begin promptly at 6.45 and, um, and have our final hearing. Thank you. How long does it take? Yeah.